including the first female Muslim representatives and the first Native American women. Now, among that freshman class of Democrats, two lawmakers of the Muslim faith, both women, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, both are radicals who appear to be clear and present dangers to liberty and our constitutional republic. Joining me now, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Newsbaum. Barry, Rashida Tlaib, let's start with her, and in case you missed it, her little tirade about what she is planning to do as a newly sworn in member of Congress, what she is planning to do in the 116th Congress in her own words. Roll tape. People love you, and you win. And when your son looks at you and says, Mama, look, you won, bullies don't win. And I no. said, baby, they don't, because we're going to go in there, we're going to impeach the mother. Okay, foul language aside, this is very, very dangerous speak because the framers of the Constitution put in impeachment not as a political weapon, but as an operation of our functioning government, as part of the United States Constitution. And now, because of Congress women like this and others, and Congress men too, it's, the Constitution is being thrown around like so much bubblegum wrappers. It's really a sad day for the defenders and believers in the Constitution, of which our number seems to be shrinking, Graham, when people that have never read it and don't understand it are taking little bits and pieces of it. Uh, impeachment is there uh, as a removal tool of last resort to go after someone who is guilty of high crimes and misdemeanors. And it means what it says. It's not a weapon. It is something to do when you have no other alternative. Here's somebody that ran literally on a platform of left-wing social communism and has lied repeatedly during her campaign on a number of issues, which I hope we can cover, and starts off with the worst language I've ever heard coming out of a congressperson's mouth. And get this, she did it within hours of uh, being elected and sworn in, and she said during her campaign that the reason she was running was Donald Trump used bad language. What a classy first day in office. And, and she might uh, be happy to know, standing ovation from the moveon.org group that heard her say those beautiful words, Graham. People of Michigan uh, that I, I, I wonder about, why they would uh, put somebody like this in the halls of Congress. And this uh, Ilhan Omar, um, and this, uh, she's from Minnesota, by the way, the other one, um, and, and a tweet uh, that she proffered, uh, what, about uh, six years ago or so, uh, in 2012. It reads, and I'm quoting here, Israel has hypnotized the world. May Allah awaken the people and help them see the evil doings of Israel. Now, not only is this anti-Israel, but in my opinion, it's anti-democracy, and if you're anti-democracy, then you're anti-American. Again, I say to the people of Minnesota, the good people of Minnesota, what are you thinking? This was out there. Anybody could have seen this during the election cycle. Well, she ran and replaced Keith Ellison, maybe the most radical member of Congress in a, several generations, and she's going to fit in just nicely carrying on his legacy. Yeah. This is a woman that ran on the platform to eliminate the state of Israel, literally. This is what she brags about, and she was sworn in on Thomas Jefferson's Quran, which, unknown to her, is not a symbol of diversity and inclusion and progressiveness. Uh, Jefferson kept it to remind him that the Muslims of the 18th century could never be Americans because they would never believe in the American way of life. He's the first uh, president to go to war against Islam, in that case the Barbary pirates, right. and the ambassador of, of those nations told him that they have the right, they told the president, to capture kill and literally enslave Americans because they were not followers of Allah. That is why there was a Thomas Jefferson Quran, because he was worried about Islam, and now his Jefferson Bible 
comes back to haunt him because it's a Quran and has nothing to do with American values, has nothing to do with equality, has everything to do with slavery and enslavement by Islam. I'm scared to death about what these two women are going to do once they have their uh, ability to write checks on behalf of their constituents, to vote, and to dissuade people from the American way. It's a sad day in Congress. I hope Michigan and I hope Minnesota wake up and make a change in two years. And it's important that you point out the history there uh, regarding Thomas Jefferson. And, and that's how, by the way, we got the term leatherneck because uh, they would often you know, try and cut off the heads of, uh, of the Americans out there as they were fighting. That's where leatherneck comes from, by the way. But the bottom line is you put these two out there along with Ocasio-Cortez um, and their vision of America is more in tune with what the Ayatollah's vision of what he wants the world to look like and he would eventually like America to look like. It's unfortunate. Very thank you.